In this video, I'm going to talk about statically indeterminate axial loading. Additional videos and references can be found at sbainvent.com. For an object to be statically indeterminate, that means that there are more unknown forces than there are statics equations to solve for them. For an axial loaded member, for that to be considered statically indeterminate, there would have to be more than one unknown force, since there would be only one static equation that you could use to solve for the forces. To solve for all the forces of a statically indeterminate problem, you would have to find some sort of relationship within the problem, such as symmetry, that you could derive an, an additional equation that would solve for those forces. One method that could be used is called superposition method. Superposition method basically takes a statically indeterminate problem and it breaks it into statics problems. Those statics problems are then added together and from that you will derive one additional equation that you can use to solve for unknown forces. Here is an example of a statically indeterminate problem that I'm going to use superposition method to solve for. The first thing that I'm going to do for this problem is I'm going to de derive the statics equation which is 20 kilonewtons minus force FA minus force FB equals zero. From this problem I can see that there is one material inside a different material. Due to this fact I'm going to assume that the deflection for both materials is equal. And from that I'm going to derive the second equation that I'll use to solve for FA and FB. Now that I have two equations defined that I can use to solve for force FA and force FB, I can take the deflection equation for an axial loaded member, plug it into equation 2, and then use algebra to solve for the two forces. When I am done, I will get force FA equals 11.83 kilonewtons and force FB equals 8.16 kilonewtons. In addition to using superposition method, you can also take in consideration of the stiffness of each section. By taking con in consideration of the stiffness, you are basically deriving something that is similar to an electrical circuit, except you're using springs. So, for a problem that has sections that absorb the same force, you would have a schematic that would look like the springs are in parallel. And to solve for the total stiffness, you would use this equation. While if you had a problem that saw the same deflection, you would have a schematic that would look like the springs are in series, and you'd use this equation to solve for the total stiffness. I'm going to take the same problem that I used superposition method to solve for, except I'm going to use stiffness to solve for it this time. So, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to realize that each section sees the same deflection. So that will be as if the sections are in series. So the total stiffness will equal K1 plus K2. I'll solve for the stiffness for each section, which you can see here, and then I'll solve for the total stiffness. From that, I can derive FA and FB using a ratio which will be FA equals 11.83 kilonewtons and FB equals 8.17 kilonewtons which is the same answers as I got before. I would like you to try to solve this question. For the figure below, determine the force that will cause the bar to touch the other wall and determine the force on each member. To solve for part A, I decided to treat it as a stiffness problem. For whatever way you chose to solve it, you should have realized that the only part that's going to deflect is this section here until it hits the other wall. So I had to solve for the stiffness of section 1. And after I solved for the stiffness, I could determine what the force would be by using this deflection. And the force I concluded would be 132 kilonewtons before it touched the other wall. To solve for part B, you could use superposition method or you could use stiffness to solve for it. 
In either case, though, you have to take in consideration of the 0.03 millimeter deflection required before it touches the other wall, which would make it statically indeterminate. First, you have to derive your statics equation, which is 300 kilonewtons minus Fa minus Fb equals zero. And then you would derive your second equation using superposition method, which would be delta AB equals 0.03 millimeters, which is taking consideration of this deflection, equals delta AB prime minus delta A prime B. You would plug your stat axial deflection equation into equation two, and from that you would use algebra to solve for the two forces, which would be FA equals 231 kilonewtons, and FB equals 68.9 kilonewtons. To solve for part B using stiffness, you would have to take in consideration the force that was required to touch the wall, which was 132 kilonewtons. Then you would subtract that from 300 kilonewtons, which would give you 168 kilonewtons, which will set up a new problem, which sees the same deflection. So essentially your springs would be in series, which will give you k total equals k1 plus k2. After that, you can solve for Fa by multiplying 168 kilonewtons times k1 over k total plus that 132 kilonewtons, which was the force required before it touched the wall, which will give you 231 kilonewtons. And then so to solve for force Fb, you would take 168 kilonewtons times k2 divided by k total, which will give you 68.6 kilonewtons, which are the same answers that were f found using superposition method. That concludes the lecture on statically indeterminate axial loading. The next lecture will be about thermal stress.